Joining us this morning, our friends from Titusville Area Hospital, Holly Wolf. And Holly, you brought in a special guest, which we always love. Yes, I did. Who'd you bring in today? I brought in Brad Rapp. He is our um, director of physical therapy at the hospital. Hi, Brad. So Hello. the inpatient <laughs> physical therapy um, oversees that. Welcome, Brad. Thank you. Good to see you this morning. Yes, it's nice to be here. Uh, well, let's learn a little bit about yourself. All right. Um, so I... Uh, went to Slippery Rock University um, to get my undergraduate degree in exercise science. Um, I did that in 2011, graduated from Gannon University in 2014 with my doctorate in physical therapy degree. Wow. Um, I've been at the hospital here ever since. Um, I've been the director of rehab services for about four and a half years now, um, doing or overseeing most of the therapy that happens there. So and um, getting into some new things that we're going to talk about today a little bit. Awesome. At what point in your life did you know this is the path you wanted to take? Um, I would say my uh, sophomore year of college. Um, I started out um, in a different area. I started out in an in engineering field, realized that really wasn't what I was interested in once I got started, and uh, this was kind of my second choice coming out of high school, so I jumped right into it from there. I was kind of hoping you would say something that was a little more extreme, like, yeah, I was going to be a circus performer, but <laughs> ah, it just didn't work out, so this is the path. You know, those yeah. are the stories I want to hear. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Well, we I, could always make something well, up. I was work on that, Holly. Thank you. All right. Tell the next guest he needs to have something extreme. Yeah, I want, I want extreme here. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's great, uh, and it sounds like uh, you got a real passion and just a love for uh, this field. Yeah, I mean, I was always involved in uh, high school athletics, and even in college, I played some sports a little bit. What'd so, you play? Um, I played football in college um, some, and I also wrestled. Okay. Um, so, you know, I was involved in injury rehab processes, not always with me, but other teammates and such, and it was just an area that inter interested me. Um, I always, you know, lifted weights, worked out, that type of thing. So it was just an interest I always had because of my athletic um, interest, and it just kind of stemmed from there. Uh, and it's amazing, uh, I'm sure from the time that you played to now, just how much care uh, is given to uh, high school athletes today. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot different, especially with the concussion protocols and things like mm -hmm. that. There's been a lot of things change in the 10 years or so that I've been out of high school, um, you know, as far as management and, and even rehab with musculoskeletal injuries, shoulders, knees, hips, that type of thing. Um, there's a lot more care, you know, at that level than what there was just a few years ago. Every day different for you? Uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, interesting. I mean, uh, I primarily do a lot of inpatient care at the hospital now is my focus area. Mm -hmm. So you're always seeing different conditions, um, disease processes come through. And, you know, it keeps you on your toes just trying to make sure you're doing the right things for the patients and mm -hmm. getting them better as quickly as possible. Very nice. Well, uh, he does a lot with the, in with the intensive transitional um, care patients and those in that program. So. And uh, Holly, uh, just kind of recap that, that program uh, for those who might not be familiar with it. Sure. So it's uh, um, if you need a short stay, um, if you have a disease or, you know, an illness or if you've had um, surgery, maybe uh, orthopedic surgery or something like that, um, not re quite ready to go home, but um, you've kind of maxed out your, your couple days in the hospital, um, you can come to our intensive transitional care program um, and then Brad can can mm -hmm. take care of you and get you stronger and get you get you ready to, to transition back home and and be home safely um, you know a lot of patients are still weak after they've had some type of illness and and it just really is a program to get them stronger without having to go to a nursing home we can keep them you know in the hospital up to up to about 20 days um, so it's just a nice program the physicians um, round on them and you know we have everything right there from x-ray if they were to need a you know follow-up x-ray if they did have surgery or you know a chest x-ray if they had pneumonia you know something along those lines so um, everything's right there and and we transition them um, and get them home and I would imagine a program like that uh, decreases that stress of 
I, I don't feel 100%. I don't feel like I want to leave. Mm -hmm. Now here's that opportunity to stay. Oh, yeah. I mean, and even for the family members, because a lot of family members are, you know, they might have never been a caregiver. So yeah. to, to have that option um, for the patient to stay there and, and us help get them um, stronger. And, and it takes a lot of the burden and the worry off of the family members that need to take them home and then try to take care of them until they are stronger. So so we, we can do that at the hospital. And it's, it's it's a great fit. And this is a horrible thing to say, but it seems like today everybody is so busy. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, people work multiple jobs or they're running kids around, you know, yeah. just that, that extra stress. And, and again, it's horrible because here's a family member who's in need. Right. But here's maybe a, take mm -hmm. that pressure off just a little bit with this opportunity to, to maybe stay and, and continue to be looked at. And sure. For. Yeah. And even for the patient, you know, the patient might feel like they're burdening the family members as well. So it's 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 really a great program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if I have the flu, I feel bad. Like, Can you get me a popsicle? I hate, I hate <laughs> asking. You know? Yeah. Popsicle. <laughs> just maybe I'll just come up and stay at the hospital. There, like, yeah. Just, I mean, we can take care of you yeah. as always. Uh, well, uh, you know, Holly, February just seems to be a pretty busy month. Yeah. There's a lot going so on. So we have um, Heart Month, of course, mm -hmm. is in February, and you know, it's it's always a good chance for us to raise awareness of heart disease and you know the number of deaths that occur every year it's still the leading cause of death um, <clears throat> in the United States for both men and women one in four people um, could die from from a heart attack or you know some type of heart related disease so that's that's a big statistic you know one in four people so it's always a good opportunity for us to raise awareness and, um, you know, remind people that we have the cardiac rehab pro program at the hospital. So if they have had a heart attack or, um, you know, just need that extra strengthening, um, that's kind of at a longer amount of time. So the cardiac rehab program, of course, lasts for longer and, and they that they do the exercises in the um, in the actual department and have the machines you know the uh, they monitor the heart and things like that while they're doing the exercises so it's a great program and then after they've finished their eight weeks then they can continue going in um, and doing the exercises with them being monitored so it's it's a great program and especially for people that have heart issues and just helps them get a little bit stronger as well so so this is a good time to uh, just remind folks of course with Valentine's Day Yes. Yeah. Very nice. Cardiac rehab at Titusville Area Hospital. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of this is because somebody's already gone through a situation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what about the prevention part of it? Should they be seeing their doctor if they yeah. if they think they're having issues yeah well i mean everybody should should of course if they are having you know some type of chest pain or something like that and it's it's prolonged or um getting worse uh, extended period of time they of course need to go to the emergency room but if it's um you know just maybe your blood pressure's up or you know some people monitor that at home other people don't but you know um, any type of symptoms like that um, they definitely would need to see their physician but I mean honestly people should just have annual exams they need to get in there and have their annual exam especially if they don't um, watch you know their physician pays close attention to their cholesterol every year and, and all of those types of things and if you have a history of heart disease that that's really important to to check your cholesterol mm -hmm. and make sure your blood pressure is staying in check so um, always always check up with your doctor at least once a year and then you know of course if you are on blood pressure medications then you're you're required to go um, more frequently than that so they can keep a better eye on you Brad for you is that uh, when you work with a patient who has uh, undergone some some treatment for heart issues uh, is there special care that you guys place with them or how do you push them and not push them? Yeah, I mean, definitely there's certain parameters that you need to stay within um, depending on the, the severity of, of injury to the tissue or maybe what kind of work they've had done. A lot of times people may have precautions um, if they've had any kind of open heart surgeries or anything like that related to their issues that they can't lift their arms over their head, they can't lift more than 10 pounds. So a lot of it is training, getting them to understand that and the importance of why they can't do that. Um, mm -hmm. to prevent, you know, long-term issues down the road. Um, and then modifying activity that they would need to do at home when they get home to be able to maintain those parameters um, appropriately. So that's a lot of what we work on with those types of patients. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Holly, next. 
So Brad's going to talk a little bit about EMGs, okay. um, which would do, which we do at the hospital. He's certified to do them, so he's going to give you a little bit of information on those. Great. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is a, a service that we've provided at the hospital for many years, probably 25, 30 years. It's something that I'm getting into specifically, though, at the hospital. Um, it's electrodiagnostic testing is the broad category. Um, essentially, there's four or five subcategories of testing, but the most common that we do with patients that get referred to us is nerve conduction velocity testing and electromyography. Essentially what that means is we're testing the health of the nerve and then the uh, muscle separately to try and determine if there's any um, issue in their uh, wiring process of how the nerves innervate the muscles and, and make them work, or if there's disease in the nerve that's um, not allowing that signal to get through. Um, so um, there's uh, many different ways we would go about testing that. Um, the process typically involves um, some stimulations to the nerves, and we record how it travels, um, usually from up the shoulder down towards the fingers, or from the hip area down to the feet. Um, to see if the nerve's working appropriately. And then we have a needle, a small needle electrode that we take samples of the muscle. And we get um, a signal from the muscle that will give us recordings. And then we put the two pieces together then to um, generate a report that goes out to the doctor. Wow. It's pretty neat, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you been doing this? Uh, I've been doing it about a year and a half now. Um, it's a little bit of an intense process to, to go through all the training and stuff, but I've been doing the tests about a year and a half. Um, so those results, does that change treatment plans for the patient? It can, depending on the issue that they're having. Um, sometimes, um, you know, we see a lot of people that the doctor may suspect that they have carpal tunnel syndrome in their wrist, or maybe they're having neck pain that is running down the arm. So we're trying to determine if it's a neck problem or if there's something else down in the arm causing that deficit that the patient might be having. So um, de depending on what the test finds, that may determine if their treatment stays the same or um, changes. At what point would that be the course to take? Um, really any time in the process, if a patient's suspecting that they have an issue or that you talk with your doctor and they find that you might have an issue that relates to numbness or tingling in your arms or legs, like I said, if you have back or neck pain that's going down your arm or leg, you may be appropriate for a study okay. um, and, and those types of things. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a diagnostic tool to diagnose, you know, what is potentially going on. So, yeah, it's it's pretty neat. Uh, you're watching The Morning Drill on stream television in Armstrong and listening to it on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Uh, so, again, I, I would imagine the patient is working with the doctor or the physician to figure out if that's the course to, to yeah, take them. Yeah, and the physician would need to order that. So um, they would need to have a referral. Patient can't just come into the hospital and say, hey, I heard about the EMG on the, on the morning drill. Can you set me up? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, the physician would have to would have to make that referral and, and order the exam for, for us to um, do that. So, yeah. Slightly painful or not really? Um, I always say it's a little bit uncomfortable. I don't really say it's painful. I mean, for anybody that's ever had blood drawn, I don't think that it's any worse than having that done. Okay. Um, but everybody has a different response mm -hmm. to, to the test. Uh, and if it is painful, you have somebody who can help you with that, uh, Holly? <laughs> yes, we have a new pain management physician at the hospital, um, Dr. Wong. So he's joining Dr. Saxena in our pain clinic. Um, and he's he started actually this, this week or last week. So he'll be seeing patients. He's coming out of Meadville um, with Dr. Saxena, is out of uh, Meadville Medical Center as well. But they are going to be in our pain clinic on the first floor. And Dr. Saxena has been there for um, for a few years now. So he's he's really busy, and um, he's Dr. Uh, Wong's going to be a great addition to that. That's great. And, yeah. and uh, what kind of patient would benefit from these services? Um, so anyone who's having back pain, and maybe they can't figure out why, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, something along those lines. But um, so patients that maybe uh, are not interested in, in narcotics and things like that, um, so they can see the pain clinic and, and sometimes they do injections or things like that to, to help them out and, and decrease that pain. 
Uh, some uh, events that are coming up. Uh, one uh, relatively soon here is the uh, Stop the Bleed. Yeah, so we have the Stop the Bleed class on February 13th. Um, I talked about that a little bit last month. It's free to the public. Uh, we can take about 20 participants. Um, so Stop the Bleed is is kind of a national um, new program that's um, been put out there to help patients or to help anybody learn how to, um, you know, put the pressure and where to put the pressure on, um, you know, arteries that are massively bleeding <laughs> so um, just to try to stop um, you know if somebody was in a car accident or something like that and and you come upon it and um, you know someone can bleed out if if a severe you know if they've been hurt severe enough that they've hit an artery or something like that and and they're bleeding substantially then they can um, bleed out in five to ten minutes and bleed to death so wow. you know it's it's really important class and it's free to the public and anyone can learn to do it so it's it's great. That's um, wonderful. Yeah, and they can register for that online at the hospital um, or on online at the website, TitusvilleHospital.org, under events. They can go on and register, and it's, like I said, it's free. So it's a, it's about an hour course. It's 1 o'clock on the 13th, and we'll be doing other courses too. So if you're not able to you know make that course, we will be doing others. Uh, we're going to be extending those to the school district um, to teach folks there and um, the EMTs and just local law enforcement as well. So. Very nice. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of events, uh, warmer temperatures, uh, people mm -hmm. starting to think about spring and getting yeah. outdoors and golf. Yes, yes. So uh, we will be having our golf tournament on May 29th at Cross Creek. I've actually sent out the save to dates last week and have uh, quite a few teams already have responded and, and said that they are interested in playing again this year. So it was a really great day last year. The weather was beautiful. Um, so we're hoping for the same thing this year and hoping for a wonderful turnout again. Brad, how many times have you heard, hey, I want the shoulder fix before golf season? Oh, that's common. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we get we get a lot of that. Even, even through the season, the golf season, you get a lot of people that say, oh, I did something to my ankle or my hip or my shoulder. And, Shoveling you know, all that snow. Yeah, I want to get back out to it. How quickly can I get there? So, yeah, we see that often. Uh, and again, uh, Holly, uh, folks can uh, start signing up for uh, the outing now. Yeah, yeah, you okay. can go ahead and do that online, and um, you know everything can be filled out on there. Or they can, they can give me a call, and I can help them with that process. So. Now, uh, this will benefit the foundation. Yes. Yeah, so okay. all the proceeds go to the foundation, which um, will go to the to the ER project. So. Yeah. And again, I'll just recap that this is a great project, and uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be a, a busy year up at the ER. It is going to be a busy year. <laughs> we are hoping to, I'm yeah. <laughs> so the golf tournament's in May. The ER <laughs> renovations will start in May. So, so it's all, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. And we're also, um, so the hospital is working with the American Cancer Society. Um, sure you've heard of Daffodil Days. Mm -hmm. So we are, um, we're working with them this year and uh, taking. Um, orders at the hospital at the escort desk for anyone who would like to come in and um, order daffodils. It's ten dollars for a bunch of them, fifteen for a, a small pot of them, or, or twenty if they could donate twenty-five dollars, and then that that those proceeds would go towards our Relay for Life team, um, which that is usually at the end of May. They do the Relay for Life here in Titusville, but so the, that will go towards um, fundraising for our Relay for Life Titus Florida Hospital team. Very so, nice. Yeah, and the flowers I think will be delivered uh, March 19th, so towards towards the um, middle of next month, but we'll be taking orders at the hospital until the 13th. Brett, so. uh, quickly uh, tell us about the folks you work with. Um. So uh, up at the hospital, I mean, I have a number of different staff there. Um, we have a few PT staff, physical therapy. We have some OT, which is occupational therapy, and we also offer speech therapy up at the hospital. Um, uh, the speech therapists come down from the uh, skilled nursing facility here in town, um, Titusville mm -hmm. Healthcare and Rehab, um, and the occupational therapists work um, daily at the hospital also. Um, we have Mary Peterson there and Jacqueline O'Toole. And then on the PT side, there's uh, Derek Dorn and myself that do the therapy at the hospital. Very nice. Yeah. Busy crew. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, busy. they're always into something, yeah. right? It's a yeah. good thing. That's right. <laughs> well, Holly, if it's, if it's events or any other information, uh, how can folks uh, find you or get a hold of you? 
They can call the hospital, 827-8717 uh, is my direct line, or they can look on, we are always putting stuff on Facebook and, and um, you know, keeping that up to date, the website, there's lots of information on there. So, But I'm always happy to talk to anyone who wants to call. Excellent. Brad, <laughs> welcome. Thanks for coming in this morning. Holly, as always, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank Brad, you. What'd, what'd you learn today? Uh, I learned about the studio up here. I hadn't been up here yet, and I wasn't real familiar with this uh show so he just wanted to see where he wasn't coming back ever. that's right yeah right. <laughs> no. Holly how about you did you learn anything I did I learned some more about EMDs I mean I knew yes. kind of what the you know what the protocol was but didn't really know the extent of it now you, now you know <laughs> I do right. hoping Thanks. I don't have one good to thank see you guys yep, thank, thank you, you.